It's been 40 hours of torrential downpour here in Boyd's, Maryland, but that won't stop us. It's time for the NISA match of the week between Chattanooga FC and the Maryland Bobcats. Hello, everyone. I'm Adam Gotkin. Beside me is Matt Levis. And Matt, the story coming into this game has to be Chattanooga's result last week, a 1-0 loss to Flower City Union. Absolutely. Great to be back. Yeah, brutal loss last week to a team that they very easily should have beaten. Gave up a brutal goal at the 85th minute, just five minutes remaining. Uh, this is not the start of the season that uh, Chattanooga had thought at all. This was a team that came with a lot of high hopes, a lot of favorite uh, talk and hype, and they have yet to put a win in the column so far. And last week should have easily been uh, a, a victory for the team, but yeah, just gave up an easy shot in the 85th minute to uh, keep the season at, at under 500 and at the bottom of the table. Yeah, at the bottom of the table in the east but they're looking for a win here today not going to be easy though they're playing the team at the top of the table the maryland bobcats they have three wins two draws and no losses not good weather at all today the team's a bit late out of the locker room supposed to be lined up at seven weren't actually lined up until about 703 but they're out here now just about ready to get underway between the maryland bobcats and chattanooga fc we'll break for one minute National Anthem coming up after that. We'll go to the starting lineups and then kick off. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Maryland Bobcats and Chattanooga FC on 11 Sports. And so with that, let's go to starting lineups first for the visiting Chattanooga FC. Number two, Tate Robertson. Number six, Nick Spielman. Number seven, Ian Saro. Number eight, Colin Stripling. Number 11, Travis Ward. Number 17, Christopher Bermudez. Number 20, Brett Jones. Number 22, the former Maryland Bobcat, Taylor Gray. Number 33, Alex McGrath. Number 99, Marcus Nagelstad, making his first start of the year. And in goal, number 25, Kevin Gonzalez. For the Maryland Bobcats up front, number three, Sam Solomon. Number four, Noah Wright in place of Davey Mason. Number six, Mo Alwine, making his debut for the Maryland Bobcats, a new signing for the team. Number eight, Jocelyn Pisayan. Number 11, Bernardo Mahano. Number 15, Richard Forca. Number 19, Yaya Fane. Number 24, Andy Alvarado. Number 25, Brandon Clegg. Number 32, Manny Gonzalez. And in goal, number 30, Christian Kulker. The Bobcats come into this game after a draw in their last match. The final score in that one, 1-1 one to, one to the Michigan Stars. Had a goal in about the 30th minute. And then the Stars tied it up right before halftime. That play where Davey Mason broke his nose. Mason, one of three Bobcats currently injured. One of the three key players currently injured. Him, Darwin Espinal, and Elijah Almo all still out with injury. So those are players that the Bobcats are going to miss when it comes to goal scoring. Yeah, we'll two, see the, the, two of the team's leading this. scorers right there, Almo and Espinal, both on injury. That's two out of the team's le three leading scorers all tied with three goals on the season. Sol uh, Samuel Solomon really going to have to step up this game. He has only started one game this season, played in four, 
but has made a real dominant impact, getting three goals, which is tied for the two guys who played much of the season. So for Maryland to come out and avoid some of the issues they will have with not having the star players of Amo and Espinal, Salmon's really going to have to put this team on his back. Absolutely, although not the worst team in the world to not have your top attackers against because Chattanooga has just simply not been able to score goals in their last three matches, including the one in the U.S. Open Cup against Atlanta. They have not scored a goal. They did score three against Memphis, but other than that, just one goal against the Maryland Bobcats. So they only have one league goal in their three games. The Bobcats defensively have been really really good this year. They have only given up four goals in the games that they have played so far in the league, and they have not given up more than two goals in their last ten games overall going back to last year. They have not been beaten in their last seven league matches, and they do not want to be beaten tonight. Chattanooga really needs a win. They have yet to win their first one in the league this year, and so with that, we are just about get or just about ready to get going. Chattanooga will be going right to left in their light blue jerseys. Maryland left to right in the all yellows. Valvira Cabrera Garcia, the referee today, Will Alton Zeno Cho, his assistants, and Rodrigo Hernandez, the fourth official. With that, we are underway from the Maryland Soccerplex. Spielman starts it off with a long ball towards Nagelstad. Maryland looking to win it back. Andy Alvarado can't take it away. Here's Tate Robertson, the 24-year-old from Springfield, Ohio. Decent amount of new signings for Chattanooga this year. A lot of players in from Stumptown that came with Rod Underwood. Similar to Maryland. Sylvan Rostello leading the charge for the Bobcats. Yeah, a lot of hype coming into the season. A lot of great players coming into Chattanooga. They just have not been able to turn it into results, as you said. Unable to score goals in much of this season thus far. Uh, yeah, they did have an impressive win against USL team Memphis FC. But in league play, they have only scored one goal all season. As Noah Wright taken down there by Taylor Gray. It'll be a free kick for the Bobcats. They got possession after Nagelstad was offside. Gray has three yellow cards so far. And playing a bit more as a winger in this one than a forward with Nagelstad getting his first start of the year. Christian Kalker in goal, not Felix Anon for the Bobcats. Mahano goes for Gonzalez, but he can't control. Very slippery on the field today, although surprisingly, the field is in very good condition after, as I said in the open, about 40 hours straight of just a torrential downpour. Decent crowd today at the soccer plex. No fans on the far side of the field. They're all on the near stand, although many of them not actually in the stands, but up on the concourse watching in as the seats are all soaking wet. Yeah, definitely not the ideal conditions to be playing soccer in right now. It's cold, it's windy, it's rainy, but these teams need to put the elements behind them and just focus on making crisp, clean plays with their team. Goes out for a Maryland throw. So Alawine playing as kind of a defensive midfielder, the new signing for the Bobcats. Jocelyn Pesayan almost as the left wing back, kind of where we've seen Davey Mason, though, right as a bit of a right wing back. Maryland with three in the back as Nagelstad offside. The flag goes up, and Calker will get a free kick. The Maryland goalie in the red jersey for Chattanooga, their keeper, Kevin Gonzalez in the purple. Been all Chattanooga thus far, really not getting to see a whole lot of action now. For the first time, we might get to see Maryland go to their side, or go to the offensive side, but again, where they're being pushed back, really unable to take possession away. Christian Calker goes up the pitch towards Solomon, doesn't get all the way there. As oh, was, was a good look. It. it was a really good look there, just not enough power on that, on that pass. Here's Noah Wright, the young 21-year-old. Was at Virginia Commonwealth University. Just about to graduate from there. Here's Sam Solomon. Actually, sorry, that was Alvarado. Now it's played towards Solomon, but too close towards the keeper, Gonzalez, who lets it out. Great idea okay. right there to put it right in the mixer. couple of teammates in the area just could not make it work in the end. Just a bit too far in front of the net. Great opportunity there, but we really got to see uh, them execute it. 
Here's Travis Ward. Ward came over from Stumptown as a turnover. Here's Manny Gonzalez through towards Solomon. That was the best chance for Maryland so far in the first about three minutes and 40 seconds. Alwan goes to Noah Wright. Here's Brandon Clegg. Clegg with one goal and one assist so far on the year. As a center back, he skies that one over the head of Jocelyn Besayan out for a Chattanooga throw. Yeah, Chattanooga really lucky to come away with no goal given up right there. That was a very easy opportunity for Maryland, but again, just not able to execute. Luckily, we got a whole lot of soccer left. Let's see what this Maryland team can do. They're riding on such a high off this season. Chattanooga really struggling through this first part of their calendar. Let's see who really wants it more right now. And big for both these teams if they can pick up points early in the year as both have their West Coast road trips coming later in the season. And we've been talking a lot about the West Coast teams. Really the strong part of NISA right now is out West Coast. So these teams really got to capitalize on their East Coast opportunities before they go out to a very challenging trip out West. And making the trip a few members of the Chattahooligans, the Chattanooga supporters group. About five fans coming up from Tennessee. Always great to see a way support here in the National Independent Soccer Association as a free kick one for Chattanooga. Ian Sarah will walk over to take it. Sarah, one of the team's new players, joined Chattanooga from the Chicago house. Sent in. Locked on its way and will stay with Chattanooga with Travis Ward. That was confident defending. Just putting her body in the way, getting nothing in the way of that goalie. Beautiful work from this Maryland defense. Travis Ward to Taylor Gray. Gray making his return to Maryland today. Leaves it for Ward. Mahano coming back. And here comes Mahano now forward. Good touch there. Yeah, Maryland doing a great job to so just settle, find the open man. Of course, they're not looking to move too quickly. They know the firepower that they have over Chattanooga right now. They do not need to attack quickly. If they can play their team game, this will be a very... Easy win for the home team. We'll see what they can do. Rod Underwood known to control possession. That's normally the style of his teams. Not as easy to do on the road as it is at home. That's what Chattanooga did when they played Maryland in the season opener. That one resulted in a one-to-one -one draw as Gonzalez pressured by Alvarado. He'll have to send it forward where Richard Forca wins a header. Some great 50-50 balls Maryland is winning. Really just putting any part of their body in the way, and they are coming away with turnover after turnover on some pretty rogue passes. As Fane turns it over, was going for Noah Wright, but went out in front of the Maryland bench, and Ward will throw it in. The 25-year-old from New Jersey, played at Rowan University, has been... With a number of teams in his professional career so far, started off with Greenville Triumph, went to the Michigan Stars, stumped town, and has now landed in Chattanooga. Yeah, you know, botched throwing right there for Chattanooga. Didn't even get it inbounds. Manny Gonzalez was looking back for Fane, but Fane will have to foul Taylor Gray, and it'll be a free kick for. Yeah, it looks like Chattanooga. he got just his shin clipped. Went down to the ground, unfortunate. But a very good opportunity here within range for a big play here for Chattanooga. And they'll bring forward the tall center backs. Taylor Gray, Alex McGrath standing over. McGrath wearing the red captain's armband. One, one of the other guys who came from Stumptown. McGrath takes a hard touch before going in front. They'll go now for Gray. 
but uh, all great, they can watch it out. That was some great deception. A nice little fake out move, and then a nice touch just a little too far on the lead towards the goal. Good idea, great, great uh, concept, great play idea, just not able to execute it in the end. Could have been a, a real great opportunity there for Chattanooga. Ball played long towards Poseidon. He's being shielded away by Robertson, who comes up with it. Maryland's still fighting for it. Here's Mahano, who tries one, but it goes right into the body of Kevin Gonzalez. Super aggressive by this Maryland attack, just trying to strip that ball away from the defenseman. Almost turned it into some great points, but I'm really loving this attacking style and this, this play style by Maryland. Very aggressive. Cerro. Here's Alex McGrath. McGrath, as I mentioned, came in from Stumptown, a native of the United Kingdom. Came over to the U.S. to play college at Appalachian State University and was named second team all Sunbelt his junior and senior year. So here's Travis Ward. Chattanooga did a lot of work to bring in some great talent, just have not executed it yet. They definitely have looked like they are the team in control when it comes to possession. And they definitely have the firepower, just have not been able to execute. They just need to play their their ball game if they want to finally come away with some scores. Here's Gray. Facing Noah Wright. Plays it through towards Bermudez, and it's out for a Chattanooga corner. The first corner kick of the day. Bermuda is a player with a lot of potential. Played in Liga MX, has been with Greenville Triumph, Real Monarchs, was with New Amsterdam last fall. Still just 22 years old. Really young, a lot of potential. Guy that Chattanooga is hoping could really bloom under the Rod Underwood system and potentially move up into one of the higher divisions where he's been in the past. Absolutely. This is a kid that they love and they want to see develop into the next great star, hopefully one day make it up to the MLS, but right now they are trying to use every ounce of talent this kid has. So young, so talented. Hopefully he can move past some of the early season blows that uh, Chattanooga's had and really focus more on, uh, on, on getting some wins. So Chattanooga can't win the initial corner. They'll try one in again, but Calker will come up with it. Goes quickly towards Sam Solomon. Looks like they're playing a little bit less as, with Solomon as a target man as they have in the past with Mahano playing further forward. Yeah, they really got to look on him to be the team leader today. Really just got to be that team role model, make the plays happen. You know, missing out on two stars like Amo and Espinal, they really need to focus on the high power star that is... Samuel Solomon. Uh, he's just got to put this team on his back. Like we keep saying that. He he will be the key difference to whether Maryland can come away with a win with all the adversity they're coming into this with. Good job there from Gonzalez to punch it out, but it'll stay with Maryland. They'll throw it in. No right. Thought about going in towards the box, but it'll send it to Fane. Switching the Point of the attack towards Richard Forka. Plays it on one touch to Jocelyn Pasayan. Played in towards the box. Was looking to Mahano, but cleared out. Great Cicero. interception there. Chattanooga able to keep possession through the Maryland press and now tried from the near side of the field with Travis Ward. Chattanooga doing a great job this game to maintain possession. They have definitely been winning the time of possession. Really keeping this ball. Out. Ooh, Alcoin tripped up there. The new addition to the Bobcats comes to the team from the LA Force. A 24-year-old has been with the California team pretty much his whole life. Played at Cal State Dominguez, Cal State LA in college. Played for FC Golden State Force. And just recently in the past week, officially signed with the Bobcats and starting in his first match with the team. Maryland definitely being efficient when they have the ball, getting good shots off, but they really do need to do a better job at taking put the ball away. 
it has seemed as if Chattanooga has really maintained possession. Uh, really would love to see them turn that into something, but they are definitely maintaining and winning the game of possession. Chattanooga appealing that that one hit off the hand of Alvarado, but the official keeps it going. Here's Mahano. Mahano still with it and now loses it. Solomon pressures, but it's now Taylor Gray. Now Gray loses it to Mahano towards Solomon, who tried to back tap it to Mahano, but Chattanooga cleans it up. Poseidon hits it out, and it's a Chattanooga throw in. This game, an important one for Chattanooga FC. Still looking for their first win on the year. Yeah, well, first league win. Chattanooga yeah. did have a very impressive win in the U.S. Open Cup uh, against USL Memphis FC. Uh, but, yeah, have not had the same fortune that they did in a, in a very high-scoring performance by the team that they have had here in Nisa. Hopefully they can move past that point and really focus on what they did well against what is... a on paper, a, a higher-ranked team. Well, the next play, Bay City's, or sorry, ne the next play, Flower City at Flower City on May 21st, and then host Bay City's, as they're trying now with the attack sent towards Brett Jones. It goes out for a Chattanooga corner kick, their second of the day, the second corner overall. Yeah, that was a great job by Forka to get in the way there. Just threw a leg right in the path of that shot. Knocked it out of bounds. Of course, we will get a corner kick, but great defensive clearing right there. Looks like Chattanooga is formulating some sort of game plan. Their four attackmen all huddling up towards the top of the 18. McGrath standing over in the corner flag with Cerro close to him. McGrath, though, opts to play it long on an outswinging ball. Forka heads it out. Only as far, though, as Travis Ward. Yeah, just didn't get it far enough into the mixer. Had four blue jerseys right at the top, just not Tackle far enough over. Offside, and that'll be a free kick for Maryland. That was the official. Chowu put up the flag, and Chattanooga with the palms into the air. They were... Not happy with that as here's Andy Alvarado for Maryland to Sam Solomon and now Noah Wright. Wright making his first start of the year. He's appeared in two games prior. Uh, Solomon pokes it away, but McGrath is able to play it back towards. Looks like he got a little jersey grab there too. Gonzalez. Gonzalez skies it over the head of Alex McGrath. And Maryland with another throw in. Right, tried to bounce it to Solomon. It was taken away on the way, but it stays with Maryland now with Al Wan. Up towards Brandon Clegg and back to Al Wan. Al Wan being very vocal. Still doesn't have the full chemistry with his teammates, so has got to work a bit harder to make sure that they know exactly what he wants. As it's played forward towards Bermudez. The official, Javier Cabrera-Garcia, will play it back to middle of the field and a foul on Chattanooga. Pane will take the free kick. Alvarado to Noah Wright. Was looking to go through the legs of Ward, but it'll stay with the Bobcats as Pane plays it towards Solomon. Maryland win. definitely got to do better to get those 50-50 balls. That was not a good pass into the mixer for Solomon. Really could not have expected him to come down with that, with all that pressure mounting on him. Maryland needs to be smarter with their passes if they want to execute and come away with successful drives down the field. The wind blowing very hard from the left to the right. The rain going horizontally as Mahano will send in the corner kick. 
and swinging right into the hands of Kevin Gonzalez. Maybe was aiming higher up towards the top of the box, but as I mentioned, the wind not in his favor in that situation. Playing a ball in swinging as it's thrown right to the feet of Travis Ward. Yeah, these conditions are definitely not optimal. This ball is definitely not going to move as predicted for a lot of these players. Could see a lot of stray balls from the wind. Also, this field and these conditions are very wet and cold. Will greatly affect these players' overall performance out here. It feels almost like an October night, not like a May night. As a Chattanooga player down on the ground. Looks like that might be Tate Robertson. Looks like he'll get right back up to his feet. Good to see that. And it'll be a free kick for CFC. Chattanooga finished fifth in NISA in fall of 2021. In the spring, they were sixth. But the league has changed its format since then. That was the whole nationwide league. Now it's played East versus West and Chattanooga in fifth, which is last in the East, although they have not played as many games as the four other teams. As here's Taylor Gray. Played in towards the box and headed out by Brandon Clegg. Gray misses, and it's now Mahano playing it forward, but Bermudez was able to slow it down, not for long. Here's Poseidon. Goes to Mahano. Played toward Noah Wright, but just too far out of Wright's reach, and that's a goal kick. Just over 20 minutes in here in the 21st minute. The team's trading chances back and forth, neither with a strong majority of the possession. Definitely sloppy play with a lot of balls given away. But as we expected that to be in these conditions, you know, these, these guys are trying the best with this very wet, very cold, definitely very hard soccer ball right now. They're doing the best they can with the current conditions they're working in. Yes, very sloppy ball. Pretty even on both sides, I would say that Chattanooga has definitely been more in possession of the ball, whereas Maryland has been more efficient with their shot selection. But both very even, both great shots. Sparrow tries one, but it misses wide to the right. Yeah, both teams playing great game plans right now. It'll be exciting to see who's pans out right. That was pretty promising from Chattanooga with Brett Jones pulling it down the far side of the field and then Saro trying a long shot. Not the worst to try those in this game if you can get them on goal as potential for some rebounds off the wet gloves as it goes right to the hands of Kevin Gonzalez, the Chattanooga keeper. Here's Spielman. <laughs> McGrath to Ward, the former Stumptown teammates, and play towards Taylor Gray, but the flag is up. He is offside, and Rod Underwood is speechless, doesn't even know what to say. As offside again it is a Chattanooga forward. Happened a number of times so far today, and Underwood is not happy of what he's been seeing. Yeah, a lot of great opportunities when you first look at it, but the second he crosses over that offsides, that opportunity's gone. Definitely some shots that could have been there for Chattanooga, only to be taken away by the whistle. Travis Ward. Just to... Out of the reach of Bermudez. Played towards Sam Solomon now for Maryland. Towards the end line, he keeps it in. Played out by Nick Spielman. Spielman been with Chattanooga since July of 2020. Played at East Tennessee State University and was named second team all SOCON there. Has played in now 43 NISA League matches, so a true veteran in the league. As Spielman pressured by Mahano, but is able to 
keep it in his side's possession, but it's now turned over with Noah Wright stepping in front of Gray. Now Yaya Fane. Maryland doing a great job trapping Chattanooga every time they get the ball in their defensive zone and still keeping the pressure as a whole. It's Maryland pressing high as Alex McGrath gives it off to... Yeah, there's, not, there's not a single jersey on the Maryland defensive side right now. Everyone is on the offensive side of the ball at the moment. As that'll be a free kick for the Bobcats. And Saro not happy. Chattanooga overall very frustrated with the officiating so far. It'll be a free yeah. kick for the Bobcats. About 25 to 30 or so yards out. Definitely this is where you miss Darwin Espinal. Yeah, this is where Solomon... Well, let's see, who who, who do we have kicking this, this shot? A big opportunity here for Maryland. Don't get many clear shots like this right at the net. Sure, he does have to go over that wall of blue jerseys, but let's see that leg power. It'll be Manny Gonzalez who's standing over. A massive wall in front. Gonzalez sparking instructions at his team. Gonzalez tries it. Stopped initially. Alvarado keeps it in. Played in front, but into a sea of Chattanoogans. And it'll be played out. Poseidon able to keep it in. Two unfortunate misses there. That was a great shot off the free kick. Then to be put right in front of the net off the mixer. Unfortunate that Maryland couldn't come away with that with a goal. But two great opportunities. Oh, oh. He had a chance there. Very risky. Very, very unlikely to have hit that, but I I like I like the aggressiveness. I like the I like how Maryland is asserting their dominance so far this game. You know, really doing what they can to minimize even Chattanooga getting on their side of the field. Well, Clegg, the, I've, I've said this multiple times, he was the leading scorer in the EPSL for a reason because he scored on some of those opportunities. He has an absolute rocket of a right leg, and he had a chance on that one. Chattanooga will definitely look to try and at least get this ball into offensive zone. Maybe they can come up with a quick play, come out with their second goal of the season. Towards Gray. And he's taken down by Fane, and the official says no. Nagelstad tries it, tried to curve it in, but it misses wide. And Rod Underwood is about to lose it, just screaming at the fourth official, yeah. Rod Hernandez. And he has some merit behind his frustration. He's yeah, that was a clear missed call. Absolutely just saw one of his men go tackled to the ground. Should have been a very, very nice shot opportunity for Chattanooga off the free kick, but instead it's going to go the other way. Christian Calker pushing his team forward. That was a good chance for Chattanooga. Probably their best yet of the day. Calker sends it with the wind in his favor. Manny Gonzalez keeps it with Maryland. But back to Chattanooga, it's Brett Jones. Now Tate Robertson. All the way back to Kevin Gonzalez, one of the top Goalkeepers in the league. A lot of professional veterans between these two teams, even though there's a ton of new faces on both sides. Players who have played in NISA, the USL Championship, and a few who have some experience in USL League One, as here's Travis Ward. Towards Taylor Gray, him and Noah Wright racing towards the ball, but Wright will win it. And it's played to Andy Alvarado with McGrath on his back and now Alwan. Yeah, all these experienced players that both sides brought in, not just this year, but over these teams' experience as, as a club, uh, they're really wanting to advance their team, and it's why both these teams came in with a lot of hype and a lot of expectations to maybe compete, if not win, the East. And Maryland is certainly holding up their end of, of those expectations. Chattanooga has the firepower, just has not had a whole lot of games to start out with, and has looked promising. Unfortunately, has just not notched one in the win column yet. But Chattanooga, definitely with time and more games to play this season, should definitely turn the season around. Mahano looking in front. It's still loose, but Solomon couldn't control it. Colin Stripling. 
Gonzalez pressuring. It's still stripling, and now he'll clear it further out to Nagelstad. But right to Richard Forka from Maryland. I think if you want to score a goal in conditions like this, you just have to send it in towards an area of people, and somehow the ball eventually could find its way to the back of the net, which is how slippery it is. We've seen so many mistakes in this one. That's how a goal could come. It's not going to be easy to get Absolutely. a perfect shot off from long range as you're Absolutely. Chattanooga attacking. Maryland also playing very high defensively, keeping most of their defense up. The flag at, up again. That's keeping most of their defense when in the offensive zone at the midline. You know, a very easy chip over their heads. And the speed of Gray, we've seen that all night. He's really not been phased by the rain. He has shown his wheels tonight. If they can put an easy shot or an easy, easy send over the defenders, Gray might just have the flat-out speed to clear through that and get a clean shot at the net. Al one. Yeah, Maryland keeping about four defenders at the midline. Very interesting tactic. Yeah, we've seen that a lot with Manny Gonzalez. The Bobcats playing three in the back, but Gonzalez will play back there sometimes with them and help out as Mahano will try one, but it's right to the body of Kevin Gonzalez. I mean, yeah, that goes back to what you were saying, just kind of laying in a shot. This ball is wet. It can slip off any goalie's hand, just laying in. A powerful shot from outside the 16 could be what one of these teams needs to take that one nothing lead. As an injured player down on the field for Chattanooga, and the trainer will come out. I believe that is Brett Jones, the 23-year-old from Mission Viejo, California. Looks like he's grabbing, maybe that's an ankle. Looked like he was probably going to stand up there, but medical staff will take a look. So one of the trainers will go over and see how... He's doing here. 31st minute, still no score between the Maryland Bobcats and Chattanooga FC. You've mentioned this a few times, but these two teams were thought by many, thought by most to be the two favorites coming in to the season in the East. Chattanooga has not yet gotten the points. They've looked okay in a couple of their matches, losing their last one to Flower City by a score of 1-0. They have a chance in the next two to really turn things around with the Maryland Bobcats in this game and then going to Flower City. After that, though, things don't get much easier. They'll play at home against Bay Cities, play the Pulse, and then go on a little West Coast trip. So at no point is there ever really an easy point of their schedule like you could say there was for the Bobcats to start the season. After the Chattanooga game, playing Flower City, Syracuse, and then Flower City again, those Central New York expansion sides, definitely two of the weaker teams. There isn't really that chance for Chattanooga to pick up points. So all of these matches, especially this one, are going to be important for them, as after the injury, Roddy Green looks like he might be coming on. Yeah, and Chattanooga, uh, yes, came in with a lot of high expectations. Has not looked to the level at which we expected them to, but has not looked bad at all. Uh, two ties on the season, one loss. Of unfortunately, nothing in the win column just yet, except for that out of league con out of league game in the U.S. Uh, Open Cup. But they have not looked bad within league. One one draw at one one against uh, our own Maryland Bobcats, and a zero zero draw uh, against uh, Valley Union. So or Valley United. So very possible to uh, to see that this team does have the talent. They just have not been able to s execute the way that we want them to. They've had a lot of great opportunities to take shots, but have just messed up one or two little things in the process, whether it's too high, a bad cross into the middle. they got to iron out these mistakes, but this is a very talented young roster, and that hype I is very well merited. We just need to see it come out. As it is Roddy Green coming in and... Brett Jones out after the injury as the flag goes up again and again Chattanooga offside. Roddy Green, an interesting story for sure, was with Detroit City before. Started off as a fan for them, was in the stands cheering on the team with the Northern Guard and then ended up joining the senior team. And then as they moved up to the USL Championship, he stayed in Nisa, moved over to Chattanooga FC. And he comes in for Brett Jones who comes off with an injury.
Dave Robertson will start it up. 34th minute. Still no score as here's Taylor Gray. Taylor Gray has shown his outright speed today, but he'll just dump it off. Goes to Ward, and here's Bermudez. Plays a 1-2. Bermudez just keeps it in on the end line. Goes to Gray. Gray tries one, but it was blocked. And now here comes Maryland on the counter. Tried to set it up with his left foot, but it was too late by the time he loaded up. Had a defender right in his way to block that shot. Beautiful defense by Maryland. Ball played through towards Nagelstad, but Forka denies. Here's Brandon Clegg. Goes towards no right, but too much on it. Ward will keep it, actually let it go, and they get throw in before starting it back up fast to Spielman. McGrath, too hard of a touch. Solomon almost took it away as it's Ward. Cerro, there's no one there. Ten minutes to go until we hit 45. Still no score. Both teams with a few opportunities, but either yeah. able to find the back of the net. Both teams looking so equal tonight. Yeah, both making their mistakes, both having their own opportunities. I mean, we both came we came into this game expecting, yeah, Chattanooga had not had a great start to the season, but we knew the talent they had, and they are clearly showing it, keeping an undefeated Maryland squad uh, scoreless at the moment. And Maryland has not lost in half a year as no whistle at all there, and Chattanooga will come up with it. One other match today in Nisa at 10 p.m. Eastern time. L.A. Force will host Bay City's FC, and then tomorrow... I believe they're calling it now the Thruway Derby. Uh, AC Syracuse Pulse will host Flower City Union. One midweek match in the U.S. Open Cup. Cal United Strikers host LA Galaxy of the MLS. But only three matches this weekend as Travis Ward is down. Looks to be a bit injured, but he's able to get back onto his feet. And yeah. the trainer won't have to come out. Seemed more angry than injured at something right there. Well, they've definitely been very frustrated with the officiating so far in this one as Rod Underwood now speaking with the fourth official. Yeah, just not able to get away from these offsides flags. So many great shots down, or so many great sends down the sideline only to be called backwards. I mean, you can't really get many opportunities like that and lose them just by a, a silly whistle. As goes out for a Maryland throw. The Bobcats allowed a goal in the 46th minute in their last match. They've got to make sure that they don't fall asleep at all here in the waiting hours or the waiting minutes of the first half against Chattanooga because the second that you do, Chattanooga will pounce. Travis Ward looks to be okay after being down for a minute. Yeah, Chattanooga definitely showing the speed advantage today. They have been absolutely running up and down all over. Maryland Bobcats. The one thing the Bobcats do have going for them is they are definitely the more composed team, definitely being more calm with their passes, taking more time, not making the same kind of mistakes that comes from this quick style of play. But it is definitely keeping Maryland on their toes as Chattanooga is just sliding this ball around, making great sends that keep getting called back, but hopefully they can iron out those issues and come away with a successful send down the sideline. Roddy Green plays it for Cerro. Looking in front, Clegg slipped, and it results in a Chattanooga goal. CFC leads 1-0 in the 38th minute. Second goal of the Nisa season for Chattanooga. What a beautiful shot. Did exactly what I just said. Got a, gr a good send down the sideline. Sent it into the middle. Looked like two Chattanooga FC players were just staring at that ball. One said, hold on. I got it from here and just sent it to the back of the net. What a beautiful opportunity and what a great point scoring advantage we have here for Chattanooga. Bobcats definitely not out of this yet have looked in control when it comes to the tempo of this game. 
They just need to play their style of game. They have not lost so far this season. They're certainly not going to go out without a fight. And so CFC leads 1-0, and it's Marcus Nagelstad who puts it into the back of the net. His first goal on the year. And Chattanooga leads 1-0 as we now move into the 40th minute. Maryland looking to get one back before the half ends. Here's Al Wan. Maryland surprisingly still down, is still running about four defenders back, although it looks like one of them will be pressing up. But they are definitely running a much more defensive scheme today. Clearly, clearly worries about Chattanooga's speed and quick pace brought out this system, but so far it's not paying off. McGrath comes up with it and races forward. Here's Nagelstad. The flag stays down this time. Nagelstad looking for another one. But Clegg is, is able to poke it away. Finally, Chattanooga is able to get a shot downfield without referee interference. Just unable to put it together like they did the last time. Can't be mad, though, right now. They are sitting on top very well and very comfortable. And Maryland is going to have to find someone to score. Sam Solomon, probably the man of choice with three goals on the air, but they're without Elijah Amo, Darwin Espinal, Davey Mason, so much of their attack currently injured. So they're going to need someone to step up and do it. Yeah, so much of their team's point scorers are out right now, and this team is currently looking at that scoreboard in a deficit. Yes, yeah, Samuel Solomon, of course, is, is tied with the other two leading scorers, so he is definitely the target to look for for this Bobcats team. But Maryland has definitely been feeling it and will continue to feel the absence of Amo and Espinal. Their offense has looked like they've put together some good plays, just unable to execute in the end. Some great crosses, some great chances, just not able to execute in the end. Alwine plays it to Solomon. Oh, poor Here's decision. Sergio. Poor decision to send it back, taken right away by Chattanooga. That one off of the body of Cerro, and Fane will throw it towards Mahano. Noah Wright. Leaves it for Clegg, moving here now to the 43rd minute. Maryland now trails 1-0 to Chattanooga FC after Marcus Nagelstad scored. As Alwine plays it towards Poseidon. Oh, just a bit too far in front. Good, good thought process, good idea, just not able to execute it well. Maryland in no rush. This is not their game plan to move quickly. They're going to take their time, find their open shot, move this ball around as much as possible. That's just how they do it. Looks like we're going to have an injured Alvarado Bobcat. Alvarado now down. And Chattanooga will have to wait before restarting. Looks like he's grabbing that right heel, maybe the back right of his foot. So he'll take a seat. When these two teams last played, all the way back on March 26th, it ended in a 1-1 draw. Chattanooga was the team to score first before Maryland evened it up in the second half. Is Alvarado able to get back? I think these teams are feet. really bringing out a lot of, of great in each other right now. Both these teams are playing some excellent soccer at the moment, really doing well. Game plans are going to a T. Of course, Maryland, of course, would like to see scoreboard be a little different. But overall, both game plans are working to both teams' advantage. Maryland is by no means out of this game, and especially in front of their home crown of these conditions, anything can happen. The official 
talking to both teams before eventually giving a drop ball and Chattanooga will take it. Nagelstad now with Maryland confused will go forward. Saro. Messiah coming back will take it away and send it out. And now on the sideline, Rostello and Underwood bat at each other. Rostello frustrated that Chattanooga just didn't give the ball back to Maryland, as you see most of the time on a drop ball like that. Clegg to Mahano. Tries one and just misses to the left as we have now hit 45. Gotta say, that was a bit of a greedy shot. Definitely had some better opportunities. Could have gone closer. That was just a, we're down. I need to get something in the back of the net kind of shot. Just a bit too far to the left. Three minutes shown by the fourth official. And so we'll play at least three more here in half number one. Rain still coming down. The wind still blowing very hard. Definitely not the nicest day. Not what you'd expect from a May night. But this adversity and these conditions are what is going to bring one of these teams over the other. Whoever can handle these conditions can can master the slippery field and the and the wet ball and can handle the, the, the cold and the breeze is going to be the one who comes away most successful in this game. As after all of that, the flag goes up from one of the assistant referees for an offside, but they will give it to Chattanooga saying a foul before that, and it'll be a free kick for CFC. As we're now about a minute into the added time, the injury time here in the first half. Alex McGrath will take the free kick. Goes to Gray. We'll have to do it again. McGrath this time goes the other way to Cerro. Back to Spielman. Gray. Oh, yeah. Getting very physical down there. Wright and Gray both throwing hands, both throwing each other down to the ground right there. And it'll be a foul on Maryland on Noah Wright and another free kick here for Chattanooga's. We're now about two minutes in to the out of time and Christian Calker, the Maryland keeper, comes all the way out. He is yelling at he is given that rep an earful. We're gonna get a yellow card. And a yellow card there shown to Maryland. Not sure if that one was to Calker or to Noah Wright. It goes to one of those Maryland players and we'll have a free kick here for Chattanooga that Alex McGrath most likely take off. So Cerro Standing near. It's been a rough start for the officials. Yeah, Can't been a lot of calls so far this game. A lot of, lot of offsides. A lot of missed opportunities on both sides from these calls. You know, of course, we do want to see a clean game, but we also do want to see just some soccer played. Here's Gray. Facing right. Now goes to Cerro on the edge of the box. Played in front, a shot was blocked by Clegg. As we're now about over three minutes into the added time, but probably we'll see a bit more after the yellow card. As Ward plays it towards Gray. Ball towards Cerro and out. 
And yeah, that will do it for half number one. The score, Chattanooga FC 1 and Maryland Bobcats nil. Uh, Matt, any last words before we go to break? Yeah, really even half. Uh, scoreboard, of course, giving Chattanooga the, the advantage. A great shot opportunity there and well executed. Uh, a much needed goal for the morale of this team, only the second one on the season. Uh, Maryland looking very calm and collective, but unfortunately have not converted that into any goals. Uh, if they want to come away with at least a tie or a win, they're going to continue up to play this game plan that they are, but a little more successfully. They've got a lot of great shots into the mixer, but they've also taken a lot of questionable shots from far out that, you know, in uh, normal circumstances, I would say is a terrible idea. Under this wet conditions, maybe, but there's definitely been a lot more opportunities for this Bobcat teams with a little more high of a probability of landing. And so can confirm that first yellow went to Noah Wright as Christian Calker was just shown a yellow after he was talking more to the official before the half ended, but they'll now head in it to the locker room. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Maryland Bobcats and Chattanooga FC here on 11 Sports. Second half between the Maryland Bobcats and Chattanooga FC just about to get underway. CFC leads 1-0 after a Marcus Nagelstad goal. Two substitutions for the Maryland Bobcats. Uh, James Cisse and Noah Wright coming in. Or sorry, and Joseph Boone coming in. Sam Solomon and Andy Alvarado coming off. Doesn't look like any subs for Chattanooga FC. They did have to make one in the first half after Brett Jones was injured. Roddy Green came in. Bobcats will attack right to left. Chattanooga left to right. Maryland, if you're just joining us in the all yellows, CFC in the light blue tops and navy blue shorts. Boone standing over the ball. Javier Cabrera Garcia blows the whistle and we are underway for half number two. I'm Adam Gacken. Matt Levis beside me. Hope you all are having a good night. It's about 45-ish degrees here. Feels like about 40 with some rain and out five mile an hour winds with gusts going up to 14, 15 miles an hour. Definitely not the most pleasant night to play soccer, is it, Matt? Absolutely not. But the wet brings out the best in every athlete and brings out who is the true greats. We could see some absolutely incredible performances here tonight. This ball is so unpredictable. It's wet. It's cold. The wind is moving like crazy. These shots are so unpredictable right now. This could be anyone's game very easily. Maryland just needs, actually both sides, need to avoid taking some very wide out shots. First half, we saw a lot of shots from up 30, even 40 yards away from the net. We need to see more contained, more slowed down the pace, bring it in closer to the net, make some more smart decisions offensively. Hopefully Maryland can come away with uh, a, a redemption after the first half struggles, and hopefully Chattanooga can hold off for their first win of the season. Noah Wright tried it there, but couldn't keep it in bounds. He's had a very good game so far, Wright going up against Taylor Gray, although it looks like he switched from the what well, was the right side of the field to the left, so he'll be going up against Roddy Green here in the second half. Yeah, this ball is just so unpredictable right now. These teams are going to have to do everything in their power to predict where this ball is going to land, where they're going to aim it to, where they're going to shoot. And hopefully, they'll just get it wet enough that it will slip right through a goalie's hand fingers. Kate Robertson bringing it up. CFC, CFC has been offside a ton of times so far in this one. Yeah, a lot of missed opportunities for CFC so far this game. They've had a lot of beautiful what looks like could be great takes down the sideline, some great clears as we see them doing right now. But yeah, a lot of issues from a lot of issues from offsides flags. Gray was looking to Sarah there. It's cleared out. Now Noah Wright. Just timing a bit of an issue for Chattanooga. They would have hoped that it would be there by now, considering this is now their fourth league match of the year, and they've played two in the U.S. Open Cup, but just not there yet, as here's Roddy Green. To Cerro, on the edge of the box, now in. Still Cerro, and oh, it just curves wide. Had a chance on that one. That's the kind of shots that they need to be taking. Close to the net, lots of fire off that leg. And that ball is, again, as we said, is gonna be super slippery and unpredictable. If he puts it just in the right spot, he may have a better chance than if it was dry.
Maryland now going into the wind here in the second half as the ball played towards Joseph Boone, who has come on. Boone has started four matches this year, appeared in all five. One of the only attackers for Maryland to do so with a ton of injuries as he slips up. Got to make sure that you don't pull anything here on this wet grass as it's played through towards Gray, who is onside. Gray working past Cisse, now looking for Nagelstad, who just whiffed on it. Played in towards Greeno, try it on a volley, but can't. Oh, what a connect. beautiful, beautiful attempt right there. Just unable to execute it, but I would have loved to have seen such a cool shot like that. Yeah, Green tried it as Kalker plays it short to Clegg, goes now towards right. Robertson wins the header to Green and now gets it back. Tate Robertson in his second year with Chattanooga FC. Played at Bowling Green University, plays it towards Cerro. Kalker coming out and he'll slide and take it in. Kalker goes forward as the ball dies in the wind. Green hands it to Bermudas. McGrath to Ward to Gray. But too far in front of Gray, it'll go out for a Maryland throw. Importantly not on for Maryland right now is the team's leading scorer of uh, Samuel Solomon. Really struggled in the first half, not able to find the back of the net when he really needed to put the Seamans back, being that Maryland is, of course, down. They're two leading scorers, scorers in Elijah Amo and Darwin Espinal. And Maryland still with three substitutions left. They have three windows left. Chattanooga with four substitutes left, but they only have two windows to use. Yeah, Maryland just not able to capitalize on these tricky conditions in front of their home fans. A lot of sloppy mistakes. We've seen a lot of, not really, uh, unforced errors from the wet, but a lot of Maryland players slipping and falling and leading to some poor mistakes from the yellow. Robertson plays it back. A decent crowd tonight here at the Soccer Plex, considering the conditions. Got to say, I'm very happy to be here in the press box. Uh, couldn't, could not imagine myself out there with them right now. But the Old Bay Brigade braving the conditions as Fane loses it. Taylor Gray to Nagelstad. Now to Roddy Green. Green will try it, but it was blocked by Forka and then goes out for a corner kick. Loaded up too much. Should have had a really easy, quick chip shot there, but tried to load up with too much power. Let Maryland set into their defensive scheme and block the shot. Beautiful defense there. Chattanooga with... I believe he's now their third corner of the day. It's McGrath to take. The Chattanooga defenders all standing on the goal line, crowding Christian Kalker. The ball is played in swinging towards Kalker. And it's an Olympico into the net. And it's 2-0 Chattanooga. Oh, my. Alex McGrath. What a beautiful shot right into the mixer. Can't do anything about that. Just beautifully done. Maryland just has to sit back and just wonder what could they have done better and what can they do now down two goals. Well, that's exactly the goal when you're crowding the keeper. Kalker couldn't do anything about that with six men around him and Alex McGrath Curves it into the back of the net. I mean, you can just use see, the wind to his advantage. You can just see Calker is just sitting on the ground in disbelief. Just look at him. He is just head down. He cannot believe he just let that through. And so Alex McGrath scores on an Olympico, a goal from the corner kick, and Chattanooga leads 2 0 here in the 53rd minute. As now the official will go down to Christian Calker as he is still sitting down to see if he's okay, an injury, or he's just frustrated. Looks like he's talking to the official. He is already on a yellow card, so can't yell at him too much, and the trainer will come out to oh, call like an injury. Two Maryland keepers on the bench, Felix Anand and John Hollinger, so 
that could go to either of them. But the trainer out, talking to Calker after Chattanooga makes it 2 0. Yeah, what an unfortunate series there for Calker, having to be helped up off the ground. But yeah, really unfortunate. You know, can't take anything away from that absolutely beautiful strike from the corner. But of course, Calker, as as a, a professional goalie that he is, you know, you would hope that he could get in the way of that stop. That Chattanooga really showing the hype that they had coming into the season. They haven't really shown it a whole lot thus far in the year, but they are showing it tonight in these tricky conditions. And Calker's okay. He'll stay in, and Maryland restarts. You know, some, some of the greats sometimes perform better in the rain than they do in the dry. And Chattanooga is really putting on a show right now. CFC 2, Maryland 0. Ten minutes into half number two. Ball played through towards Joseph Boone, and he won't get there first. Gonzalez goes to Tate Robertson. Too much on it, and Maryland will have a throw. They really have got to up the pressure now. Calker plays it long, intended towards Boone, but CFC will control as Spielman wins the header. It's now Taylor Gray. CFC's really quick pace has been the real key as to why they have been containing and controlling this possession. Maryland's playing really slow, meticulous, methodical. That, that is their game plan. It is what they've been successful with all season long. But I think they are being shown that a very high-paced, quick offense can dismantle this, this Maryland defense. CSA towards the far post, and Wright can't do anything with it. Here's Ronnie Green for Chattanooga. That one, last touch by Saro. Gonzalez throws it into Demora Alwine. Goes by Mo, making his... Bobcats debut, a new signee. Here's Bermudez in the midfield, and now Cerro. Cosign takes it away. Now pushing forward. Ball trickles to Manny Gonzalez to Cisse. Cisse making his third appearance of the year. And no one there. Not a good pass at all. It'll go to Chattanooga. I don't know if it's the conditions or if Chattanooga has really just figured out their game plan that they've been struggling with, but they have been an absolutely dominating. Maryland just has not really looked. They, they In the first half, they definitely were the more aggressive team than Chattanooga. But Maryland has just simply not been controlling this ball in these last 10 minutes. CFC with a great start to the first half. As they've doubled their lead. Here's Riley Green. Plays the 1 2, and it's back to Green. Calker coming all the way out. He'll slide it out for a throw in. A beautiful play right there. Running all the way from the net to probably about 40 feet out to make the slide tackle. Really putting his body on the line. He is not going to let another silly mistake like he just had happen again. And then maybe a little bit of time wasting there from Christian Calker. After that, to uh, slow down Chattanooga, he's got to be careful with that. Already with the yellow card, an official, if they want, maybe could have given another one there for time wasting. But uh, Be Belvier Cabrera Garcia will keep the yellow in his pocket. As here's Tate Robertson. Interestingly, Chattanooga still bringing a very offensive heavy uh, formation. Only two guys back at the moment, maybe a third of Robertson dropping back. But they are definitely playing up towards the offensive net, even with a two-goal lead. Yeah, Ward kind of the left back, but he is a guy who likes to push forward. We see him also as a forward and in the midfield, but at left back today, but he is still going forward as here's Robertson. War goes to Bermudas. 
He's looking to play it forward to Gray, but it'll go out for a Maryland throw. Calker did get the nod and goal today over Felix Anand. He's given up two goals in this. That's more than any that Anand has given up in any games. The Bobcats in their open cut match lost 2-0 to Pittsburgh Riverhounds in the USL Championship. And 2-0 was the score. So you wonder at what point does Sylvan Rostello go to Anand versus keeping Calker in the mix. That'll be interesting to see as the year goes on as Brandon Clegg now joining the attack. One of the team's defenders was looking for Joseph Boone, but he couldn't control possession. And with that, Clegg will drop back. Uh, very rogue pass there for Chattanooga. Chattanooga really knows that they're in lead of this, in control of this game. Looks like they're now going to start to bring some people back up towards defense. Finally taking a more, less aggressive approach and just trying to hold this lead. Two goals is quite a feat for Maryland to overcome if they want to come back into this. Here's Manny Gonzalez. Gonzalez over midfield looking to boom, but just not enough on it. Boone, though, able to work back and take it away, and it goes now to Gonzalez. Boone, to Mahano. Maybe. Boone maybe got away with a shove there, but kept possession. Maryland was playing with advantage, as now it's Cisse. Manny Gonzalez. Al Juan. Tafane, who keeps it in on the sideline and now plays it in, but couldn't connect 100% with the ball and went right to Alex McGrath. Chattanooga controlling in their own zone as here's Cerro and CFC looking to go on the counterattack, but Borka denies it from getting to Ronnie Green. Yeah, great interception, cutting across the field to just put a foot in between that path. That could have been a very easy opportunity to make this a pretty untouchable game for CC CSC. Yes, here's Nagelstab behind the defense, but Bonnet a good job to work back and send it to Kulker. Clegg towards Noah Wright, but right to ahead of Tate Robertson. Maryland getting ready to put on some new players, Drew Wivel and Michael Akinkoye. Yeah, got to change up the game plan somehow. They are just not, they look, they look frankly a little winded out there, really getting outrun, outpaced by all of Chattanooga. Um, down to nothing, got to change something up. So here's Calker as we're now over two thirds of the way through this match. Not enough on it. It's here CFC and Roddy Green. Green pass right. Chipped it forward towards Bermudez, but Maryland was able to take it away. As here's Boone, maybe a chance for Maryland. The oh. speedy Boone down the near side. Boone's got to make, Boone. make a move. Oh, just a little too far away, but did make a nice switch back on the ball. And so Chattanooga comes up with it as Manny Gonzalez with a slide in and a man down for Chattanooga. The substitutes will get ready to come on for Maryland. Right, it looks like he might be getting straight back up. A lot of ankle injuries we've seen tonight probably contributing to this wet grass and the lack of grip a lot of these players are working with. So Al Wine and... Noah Wright off, Drew Wivel and Michael Akinkoy on. The man that was down for CFC was Christopher Bermudez. Wright with a pretty solid game. Definitely one of his better ones so far with Maryland. That's four substitutes on for the Bobcats, so they have one left for the remaining 28 minutes as another slide tackle there, and Chattanooga's bench is I not at all happy with that one as now it's Colin Stripling down, holding his leg. That a bit late, and Chattanooga, their 
fans that made the trip are not happy. Maryland appealing that. A call was missed earlier, and because of that, it's not being played both ways. But that one definitely a bit late. As Stripling's still down. Yeah, he's he'll he's, now get up without the trainer needing to come on the field. Yeah, he's still he's still hobbling around a little bit, clearly. Uh, but 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 good show of sportsmanship between the two. Definitely still hobbling around. Hopefully he'll shake that that pain in his ankle off real quick. As the fourth official now talking to one of the assistant referees. At the end of all of that, it'll be a Maryland throw-in as it was never a foul called. Cisse will throw it in. I think that was a good no call. Definitely a late slide, but also definitely a late dive from the Chattanooga. A little, a little issues on both sides, but you know, clean, clean soccer. Let's keep it playing. And so, Cisse being told to hold, and now play on. It was played towards Boone, but he couldn't control as Boone now goes over the back of McGrath, but it'll go out for a Chattanooga throw. Boone playing very aggressive. That's now the second time in, what, a minute now? He's applied very physical pressure on Chattanooga. Definitely some frustration settling in for Maryland, as well as a desire to just get some points on the board and make this less of a deficit than they're already working with. A good ball from Nagelstad towards Bermudez, and... Ray can't get there first. It was Clegg who played it forward to Wivel and now Akinkoye. Manny Gonzalez to Cisse, but not online, and it's back to CFC. Cerro loses it to Akinkoye, and it's now Bernardo Mahano. Akinkoye, the local product, played at Bolas High School over in Potomac, Maryland. About a 20, 25 minute drive away. Maryland continuing to making a lot of sloppy mistakes. Yes, definitely this ball is not working as they would like to in these conditions, but they are really struggling, making a lot of high passes, a lot of too far through balls. They really got to settle down. This team prides themselves on playing a slow and steady game of soccer, not allowing the other team to take possession and just keeping control on their side. They've really been tested tonight by Chattanooga, and Chattanooga has definitely been the more dominant team out on this pitch. The Bobcats, no matter what, will stay on the top of the table after this match. CFC would move all the way up into third place in the East if the result holds, and they can win this one. They've only played three matches. Coming into this one, this is their fourth, and this is Maryland's sixth. As here's Alex McGrath on the edge of the box. Plays it back. CFC just looking to control possession here as Clego headed out as here comes Cissé now up the field. Yeah, CFC now bringing back a third defender. Definitely taking a more defensive approach now later on into the game with this lead. They were running in... About two men back earlier on, but now they are starting to settle back, park the bus, and try to come away with this at their first win. That was Drew Wivel and now Manny Gonzalez. Leg was looking for Boone, but a good job to step in front of it. From Collins Stripling. I'll play it forward, but Calker all the way out there will take it. He saw that from M. Karuva last week for Michigan, and that led to a Maryland goal, but this time Calker was able to clear it out far enough. So here's Manny Gonzalez. Drew Wivel. Akinkoye. Mahano, Maryland looking to get one back, but they lose possession. Here's Roddy Green. I tried to cut across the middle, but it was so well defended by CFC. Second he moved in, that ball was cleared out. Cissé, oh, pass two, and the whistle 
Not blown. It's still Cisse towards the end line, looking in front, played out, and it'll go out for a... Actually, it'll be an offside, the flag up on the far side from one of the assistant referees. Cisse getting away with what looked like a shot to the face of a Chattanooga defender. Um, yeah, lucky to, lucky to get away with no penalty on that one. So here comes Chattanooga on the restart. We'll just give that one back to Maryland and Calker. Yeah, this has really been what Chattanooga has been doing the last couple of minutes, just kind of clearing it out, letting Maryland reset, and then taking control defensively. Maryland just has no answer to the system right now. Now they do say sometimes a two-goal lead is the most dangerous lead in sports, but you'd rather be down by one, and Maryland has got to get back soon. They need another goal in the next few minutes if they want to give themselves a chance to get a point in this game. As Here's Yaya Fane. Yeah, still plenty of soccer to play. I mean, as we saw Chattanooga in their most recent loss, lost on a one goal, scored in the 85th minute. And there's still 20 minutes of game before we get some extra time added to on. Maryland is most certainly not out of this. They do have the odds stacked against them right now. But if they can settle and play their brand of soccer, it's not out of the cards for them to continue what has been a pretty miracle run season thus far. Well, they've had a good start overall but not a good one in this game as here's ward he leaves it for taylor gray and then gets it back ward was looking across it in wivel blocked goes out for a chattanooga corner kick great job there to block the cross into the middle that could have been another easy opportunity we've seen a lot of issues for calker tonight with those over the middle shots it's a good thing that maryland didn't even let it get near the middle of the field. Alex McGrath going over to take the corner kick. If you remember his last one, he scored on a Olympico. And Chattanooga will employ the same strategy here. Crowd the keeper, Christian Calker. Calker really needs to take control, set up his men. They cannot have another replay of what just happened. That would be too embarrassing. We saw him literally sitting by the net, hands in his head is in his hands, in just shock at what had happened on the last kick. Alex McGrath sends it in this time, way too short, and Wivel will clear it out. Nagelstad heads it back. Bermudez goes back one more. Wivel gets in front. Goes to Boone. Here's Joseph Boone taking it himself. Boone with a burst of speed being held by Spielman. And because of that, he will win a free kick and a card shown to Nick Spielman. Big opportunity coming for the Bobcats. This is about as clear of a shot as they have gotten all night. A lot of issues offensively. This ball has been anything but expected on these shots. If Maryland can just put a very simple shot at the top of this net, they put themselves back into contention very quickly. The Bobcats have been solid on set pieces so far this year. They are for sure missing having Darwin Espinal out there, but let's see what Manny Gonzalez or Brandon Clegg, the two standing over the ball, can do with this one. Gonzalez leaves it for Clegg. Oh my, Brandon Clegg! A rocket in the upper 90! And Maryland is back within one! What? An absolutely beautiful strike. So much power coming off his leg. It doesn't matter that Maryland's top three leading scorers are not on this field right now. Maryland has brought themselves back into this with an absolutely beautiful strike to the upper 90. Darwin Espinal has got to be smiling watching that one, and I bet you he won't hear the end of that from Brandon Clegg. The center back comes forward and delivers an absolute beauty of a strike, and it's 2-1 to one here in the 73rd minute. Back underway, Boone takes it away. Maryland now with all the momentum after that. Boone taken down. It'll be a free kick for the Bobcats. 
Another big opportunity. Maryland showing, like we said, they can work quick if they need to. They've really been slow throughout this whole game, but they can very quickly turn on the Jets and the power. We just saw what a defender could shoot at the net. Just imagine what any of these attackmen could do. And so Maryland now just trails by one. Bit too far out. We'll expect to see something put in the mixer. He's got plenty of yellow jerseys right around the 18. If he could lead one towards the net, hopefully lead to a volley. Could be a very, very vital shot selection. Manny Gonzalez with a two-man wall in front of him sends it in. Headed out by Gray. A bit too shallow. Should have let him a let his man a little closer to the net was a little bit too far towards the top of the AC. Stay headed on in front, close. But Kevin Gonzalez comes out and cleans it up. Great job right there, slid up, but he's still on the ground. It looks like, but he did a great job to slide underneath a Maryland attacker diving over the top of him. And Gonzalez might have taken a hit from that one after. A ton of bodies in front, but he'll get back up and throw it towards the far side of the field. Maryland showing promise here on the attack after a slow first about 65 minutes. Gonzalez still showing some clear pain, holding that right knee, still kind of limping around. All the way back with Christian Kalker now. A little over 15 minutes until we hit 90. As Cissé can't keep it in from going out, it'll be a throw-in for Chattanooga. Chattanooga needs to do everything in their power to keep this ball in their offense right now. Their goalie is showing clear signs of pain, continually trying to move and stretch out that right knee. Hopefully Chattanooga can keep possession until that knee is fixing. And it's a substitution for CFC coming on Alex Hernandez and off Christopher Bermudez. Hernandez, the 21-year-old, played at NC State for two years, transfer there from Appalachian State, a North Carolina native. Hernandez making his first appearance on the year as Forca plays it back to Christian Calker, turns it over. Here's Saro. In front, Hernandez, and now Gray. Gray tries to waft it in, but it goes over the net and onto the hill. A lot of poor, costly decisions from both sides. Really terrible pass right to the feet of Chattanooga. But again, Chattanooga not taking too much time to load up or find another man. They need to trust in their ability to get off a quick strike with minimal power to the top of the net. They have really struggled on these high-powered full body shots, and especially have struggled when they have a clear shot and dumping it off to someone else. It'll be a free kick for CFC. Gonzalez running back and forth now in front of his box to make sure his knee is okay. Chattanooga does have a goalie on the bench, and Alec Reddington as Forca clears it out. Here's Mahano now. Cisse, forward to Boone. Played out by Stripling. Boone has had a solid start to the season still, though has been unable to find the back of the net. You got to think for a guy like him, a young player, only 21 years old, once the first one goes in, the rest will come a lot easier. But he's struggling to get that first as Clegg slips as he tried to release it from way deep. And here comes Taylor Gray forward. Yeah, Boone, such a young, aggressive talent, really showing his physicality out there tonight. He's got a lot of upside for years to come. Yeah, once he gets that first shot, that first shot is always the hardest. But once he's got that one in, in the goal column, it's going to be so much easier for him there. He's got such raw strength and power on that leg, not to mention he's got some great speed that he's been showing, even in these tricky conditions. As McGrath looking to Roddy Green, the flag will go up, and it's an offside. Yeah, that was a very easy call for him. He was a solid three, four yards offsides from the moment that ball was even kicked. 
Cisse will start to Manny Gonzalez. Here's Richard Forca. Maryland has showed they can work quickly if they want to. They're just seeming to continue with this very slow, methodical, strategic game plan. When these teams first played, Chattanooga scored first. Maryland equalized and it ended in a 1-1 draw. Chattanooga scored the first two goals today. Maryland half the way there to maybe making it a 2-2 draw, but they're going to need one more as that ball played right to Christian Calker. Yeah, we're going to have to keep seeing that aggression out of Boone, maybe clearing a path for one of his teammates, if not himself, to the net. Doesn't have to be pretty, but a win would be so crucial to this absolutely incredible start to the season Maryland has had. As Boone somehow, somehow keeps it in Maryland possession and Cissé keeps it in, although not for long as the flag goes up from the near assistant referee to indicate the ball went into touch. CFC goes long, but back to Maryland. Passion heading it towards Akinkoye, but it goes right to Travis Ward, who was looking for Gray, but put way too much on it. Maryland just holding possession now as we're in the 80th minute. 10 minutes, 20 seconds until we hit 90. Roddy Green keeps the defender on his back and now plays it towards Cerro, but Forka was there for Maryland. A good ball to Cisse, who is pulled down by Roddy Green, and that'll be a Maryland free kick, and that'll be a yellow card shown to Roddy Green. What an easy call for the refs. They literally grabbed him by the collar and dragged him to the ground. Very dangerous play and a very easy yellow card to give out. Yeah, it'll be a yellow guard, card about 10 times out of 10, pulling a guy down from his shoulder, and Maryland will have a free kick that Brandon Clegg will take. Maryland starting to get low on time here with 80. It's the first two numbers on the clock. Clegg will play it long, intended towards Boone, headed down to McGrath. Maryland bringing a lot more offensive pressure, now only having two men deep back as opposed to the four they had earlier. Oh, another push! As Clegg there pushed in the back, and it'll be a Maryland free kick. Clegg goes to Cissé, but Cissé loses possession, and Ray keeps it with Chattanooga. Chip towards Cerro. Chattanooga is definitely going to try and close this one out if they can. Austin and Poseidon turns back and leaves it for Forca. Now to Yaya Fane. Drew Wivel to Michael Akinkoye. Wivel playing on the same side as Taylor Gray. Two guys who worked their way, their way up through the Maryland reserve team up to the professional team and something that Maryland prides themselves on as Hernandez we're gonna get a, up it's an offside another one a lot of offsides calls a lot of balls just shot a little too high over the heads for these Chattanooga players and a lot of missed opportunities off to some rogue shots good touch from Boone and it'll be a throw in for Maryland <laughs> Boone just has such a great size advantage over everyone else. You can just see he is just physically gifted and talented. That physicality and that aggression is what's going to make him such a talented player for years to come. As Boone skies it way over the net, and it goes out for a throw-in. Boone only 21 years old. Six foot one from Fort Washington, Maryland. Played at Bishop McNamara in high school. Spent a little bit of time at Mount St. Mary's. Played a little in England, and then... Amateur here 
in Maryland for FC 4188. And yeah, he's really had to put this team on his back. You know, S uh, Samuel Solomon, uh, yeah, really struggled in this first half to be that team leader. When in was the was the leading scorer for the team tied uh, with Amo and Espinal, but really struggled to get going in this first in that first half. And yeah, it has not been a perfect half, but definitely has been an improvement over what they started with. And got to give Boone a lot of credit for that one. As I can clear, missed. The shot way wide to the left, and Kevin Gonzalez will have a goal kick. Gonzalez looking for Robertson, but Cisse will head it out and up into the stands. Or you can just see the puddle. Just the amount of water and rain, just the terrible conditions that came off that ball. These players have been playing in what is essentially a monsoon. Crazy winds. This ball has been unpredictable. We've actually had some pretty good soccer to watch. As that'll be a Maryland throw. Surprisingly, no puddles anywhere on the field. The field itself, slippery, yes, but not in the worst condition. The Maryland Soccerplex ground crew really doing a good job. As here's Cisse forward for the Bobcats. A little over five minutes to go until injury time. Akinkoye. Just not enough on it towards Wibble. Oh, and Wibble had to jump over the back. Towards to Mahano on the back post. Heads it down. Poseidon sends it in. On the ground in the box and now cleared out. You can just hear the gas from these fans. An opportunity missed there towards by Nagel. Maryland. Towards Nagelstad. Kalker all the way out of the net. Sends it out for a throw in. Chattanooga will take their time now. Try and get as much off the clock as they can. Take a few extra steps on every throw in and free kick as that one way over the head of Nagelstad. He'll let Forka gather it in the corner. Goes to Brandon Clegg. Cisse. Good job from Alex McGrath to step in front. We can really expect to see a lot of Chattanooga, if not the entire squad, back on defense. Only five minutes, four minutes now remaining. They have nothing else to prove other than to keep this win alive. Chattanooga looking for their first win in league play this year as Poseidon keeps Saro on his back and then plays it forward and now gets it back. Maryland, unfortunately, looking at their first loss of the season on the other side. It would be their first loss in a little over six months in league play. Borka plays it long. Headed out only as far as Poseidon. But Gray takes it away. Right back to Maryland and Yaya Fane. Maryland Gonzalez. Maryland's got to pull out all the stops. Be as aggressive. Jump as high as possible. Get all those 50-50 balls. This is crunch time. Fane sends it in. It's blocked. Nagelstad comes back. Plays it off the head of Fane. And now it's Rodney Green for Chattanooga. Oh, two Maryland can't defenders keep slipping on the wet grass. That's a, a brutal take back. Oh, but Maryland will come away with the ball after that. And a injured player down in front of the Maryland bench. And the Maryland bench erupts frustrated because the ball was already in play. That's uh, Roddy Green down. I didn't see after. I was looking on the field, but... Chattanooga fans yelling that he was pushed down after the play. Could have slipped with how the grass is, but he's touching his face, saying that he was hit there. The assistant referee now talking to the head referee, trying to see what was going on there. Maryland had thrown it in by the time the whistle was blown. Yeah, didn't really get it. He'll throw it in again after all of the commotion 
as we're now here with 87.43 on the clock. Yeah, didn't get a great look at the incident. Very well likely could have been a slip. We have seen so many players today just slip and fall on this wet grass. So many missed opportunities off just slides into the wet grass. It'll be a drop ball after all of that. Uh, as I guess the official saying, you didn't know what happened. And the official now wanting to see if Chattanooga wants to make a substitution. They have Luke Ferreira standing with his jersey on, ready on the side as Roddy Green will have to come out as he was down injured before coming back onto the field of play. This will just add more and more time on to the clock at the end of play. As Maryland will be given the drop ball and Green will be able to come back on the field as it's played towards Akinkoye and it goes out for a goal kick. Kevin Gonzalez waiting to take the goal kick as you've got one minute and 10 seconds until the added time. Right to Green who heads it forward. Nagelstad coming in, but Good. Borka plays it back to Kalker who now goes forward. Good job from McGrath to win the header. Here's Saro. Saro slips up with some help from Cisse, falls to the ground, and it's a free kick for Chattanooga. They'll take as much time as they can as Chattanooga Maria must be, be coming in. Sorry. Chattanooga must be on cloud nine right now. Coming into this game, a really rough start to the season. Look like in the first solid 25 minutes that this was going to be a very defensive battle. And Chattanooga did not look like they were the stronger team, but over the course and they of this game, they have proven that they can handle the elements and that they can come away with this with the expectations that they came into the season with. You know, this is a team that we thought was going to be competing for number one in the East, and they really have not done that so far. Tonight, they have really showed the talent that we knew that they had in store. As that one was off of Richard Forka, and it'll be a corner kick for Chattanooga. As we have hit 90, and we're now in two at a time, waiting for the fourth official to point it towards us. It'll be three minutes added on. Maryland looking to pressure, trying to get it back and give themselves at least a chance. Here's Taylor Gray on side. Play to Hernandez. Out off of Wivel for a throw. Gray was trying to go off the body of the Maryland player, but it stays in and it's played forward towards Boone. Oh, too high for Boone. He's got the size, just not that much. Really got to settle it, and I know that ball is not going exactly where and how fast these players expected to with these conditions. But if you want to play this game, you got to make smart, safe decisions, and they kick that way out of the reach of their big man. Brandon Clegg now playing forward as Mer Manny Gonzalez pushes his team forward, but now plays it long. Off the head of Clegg, up in the air, and... Played forward towards Poseidon. Akinkoye. Fane. To Wivel. Back to Fane. About a minute and 15 seconds into what was said. Three minutes of added time. Cleared out. No one there, but... It's going to be Christian Kalker that comes out all the way forward. Maryland bringing 10 above the line. Kind of what we expected of them trying to get that final goal here in crunch time. They need to have all hands on attack right now. Cleared out again. Nagelstad this time coming forward. And Kalker has no choice but to send it out for a throw in. Some excited fans from Chattanooga coming all the way up from Tennessee to see their team get their first league win of the season. Definitely worth the road trip and definitely worth sticking around in these conditions. Roddy Green will take his time, wipe the ball down to get a few more seconds off the clock. Before now throwing it in. And it goes out again and again to Chattanooga. Now up towards about Two and a half minutes of the three. 
Was looking for Nagelstab, but he missed on it. Three balls thrown onto the field. Calker will play it, but it'll have to go again. Maryland, not much time left. Maybe a chance for one more. Nagelstad there with a foul, and he will see a yellow card for time wasting. Calker throws it forward. As we're now at about three minutes since we hit 90, Manny Gonzalez plays it forward. Ten men up for Maryland. Nagelstad coming back. Gonzalez trips him up, and it'll be a free kick for Chattanooga. And Nagelstad will take his time now on the ground as we're up towards three and a half minutes. And this could be it. Once play starts up again, we could be looking at a 2-1 Chattanooga win. A huge win for this team coming in here. Not expected to perform the way they did given their previous few games in the season. And especially not given how amazing and how strong Maryland has looked all year long. Livo plays it off the leg of Calker, who starts it up fast. After some stalling from Chattanooga, Cabrera Garcia, the referee, adds more time to what he initially said would be three. Ball played towards Boone. Forward towards himself, up towards Gonzalez. Boone can't control, and here comes Chattanooga. Roddy Green plays it back, and... There's the final whistle. Chattanooga FC wins their first league match of the year. A two to one victory over the top of the table. Maryland Bobcats. And Maryland with their first league loss since November 3rd, 2021, when they fell to the LA Force. Their streak of not giving up more than two goals moves to 11 games. But the Bobcats fall for the first time this season. Matt, any final words? It was a very brutal game. These conditions not suited to any athlete in, in a happy mindset. Chattanooga, first win of the season. Maryland, first loss of the season. A lot of firsts in this game. Uh, both teams look strong. I mean, of course, Maryland not coming away with the win, but they did look strong, did hold a lot of possession, played their team game. It's just that Chattanooga came in with such high hopes to the season, really haven't shown it off until now, and now we're finally getting to see who we knew Chattanooga was going to be coming in to this 2022 season. And so, Nisa fans, one more match tonight in the National Independent Soccer Association at 10 p.m. L.A. Force host Bay Cities. These two teams will both be back in action in their next game at Flower City Union. Maryland will be up first on... May the 14th, that's next Saturday. And then in two weeks, Chattanooga will be going up to Rochester to play Flower City. That one in two Saturdays from now on May the 21st. The Bobcats at home next on May 21st against Bay Cities FC. You can get your tickets at MarylandBobcatsFC.com. So that's all from us. From Matt Levis, I'm Adam Gotkin. The final Chattanooga FC 2, Maryland 1. Have a good night.